Hello, everyone. Good morning. I am your host, Ashutosh Thatte, and today in this edition, we will explore the role of generative design and how it is impacting and driving the future of the automotive design industry. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce Samarth Gupta, who will be sharing his perspective on this particular topic. Samarth has been serving as an industrial design specialist at Autodesk for over nine years now. He has been leading the business operations in India, introducing various design studios to latest technologies and driving a whole new brand experience for Autodesk customers. Welcome, Samarth. It is indeed a great pleasure to have you with us today. Thanks for having me. Right. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, let's dive into our Q&A session. Um, so Samarth, just to, just to sort of kick things off, what is generative design and how is it particularly relevant to the automotive industry today? If you can share your perspective with us. Sure, sure, Ashutosh. So uh, generative design is a form of artificial intelligence, which uh, leverages the cloud computing technology okay. and machine learning uh, to speed up your design to make processes. Uh, you know, it explores options which can be uh, manufacturing ready and uh, you know, it it generates in no time. So in, in a conventional manufacturing, you will wait for, you know, so long, so, so much time has to be put in to get results. But generative design, because because it is it is very automated and everything is actually happening on the cloud. So you don't worry about uh, the computing power in, in the physical format. Uh, the good thing about generative design and what uh, manufacturing companies and automotive companies are uh, looking at is that it is goal-based. So you just key in uh, some of the parameters and uh, you get the uh, results. The example that I can actually show you uh, for, uh, you know, the application of generative design is, uh, is you know, one uh, bike example, which is the lightning uh, motorcycle. And you can here, you know, see that it is a, uh, it's a swing arm that we are actually uh, working on. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we, we actually, you know, uh, what, what we start with is the definition phase where uh, we, uh, you know, preserve the geometry and we need to ensure that, you know, it is attached to the, uh, to the bike once the generative design throws the result. Okay. And I then go ahead and uh, put the manufacturing constraints, uh, the goals that I want to drive. And then I just allow the software to do its job. And right. when the software throws, you know, so many designs are thrown at me, I will assess uh, the practicality and the application of these right. designs. And then, you know, take my uh, design back to the 3D model. That oh, is how okay. the generative design works uh, okay. in this case. Okay. So I think that made it easy to understand with the example that you just, you know, just shared with us of the lightning bike as well. So taking that one step ahead, can you also help us understand maybe with another example, um, how lightweighting is enabled using GD? Yeah. So, so Ashutosh, lightweighting is central to the design efforts by any OEM. And there is a reason to that. Now, many right. companies are, they want to be at the forefront of electric vehicle technology right. or electric vehicle initiatives. And I like to take example of General Motors. Right. They believe that additive manufacturing and generative design can actually help them uh, gain the first to market advantage. And I can actually, you know, show you by, by uh, you know, demonstrating an example. Uh, okay. With Autodesk, their engineers and designers work with us, uh, work with the Autodesk team. And what they did was they optimized their seed bracket. Now seed bracket is a component that, that secures the seed belt fasteners with the seat. Right. Now what they did is that their existing seed bracket was consisted of eight parts welded right. together. And it was very cumbersome. You had eight different parts from eight different suppliers. So what so, they did is that they tried to uh, incorporate generative design technology. And what, they, what results they got was really amazing because they got one single part which was, uh, you know, uh, which was just one single part. They reduce the number of parts, which means that they reduce the number of suppliers. At the same time, the part strength was, uh, you know, much better than the the all the eight, uh, you know, uh, separate components put together. So right. GM got additional benefit of, uh, you know, uh, reducing their uh, supply chain cost, plus at the same time getting more strength. And I would say in future, it's going to be the uh, game changer because it gives you a very, very good looking and very futuristic design. Sure, sure. I mean, that, that's a great example. And thanks for sharing that, especially your General Motors and how they're using lightweighting as well. So 
if if we were to speak about the long term benefits of of gd uh, or rather using gd enabled light weighting so what according to you are some of those long term benefits that that you know they could stand to sort of gain yeah so ashutosh let's go back to uh, understand that why light weighting is so important for the automotive companies right one one of the things the light weighting uh, is important is that you know light weighting directly impacts the fuel efficiency of any vehicle right. so there has been some studies conducted which actually correlates that if you reduce 10% of your uh, rate of your vehicle it will increase 6 to 7% of your fuel economy Okay. okay. So, in order to uh, meet these, uh, you know, meet, meet this criteria, uh, right. light weighting is an emerging trend, and that is right. why there is so much of focus uh, by right. companies to adopt technologies like generative design and additive right. manufacturing to reduce design. Sure. One of the other things, Ashutosh, I would uh, like to mention here is that uh, you know, with EV technology uh, coming at the fore, and it is like you know, getting uh, getting into the mainstream. Right. Uh, light weighting becomes uh, you know i would say critical for automotive companies because the batteries themselves actually are very heavy so to balance out they have to uh, you know reduce the weight of other components so generative design definitely is going to be the answer absolutely absolutely i couldn't agree more with you on that so now that you've given us a good insight and we understand how uh, you know game changing gd can really for the automotive design and can you tell us a little more about you know how extensively can this really be used like while you've spoken about light weighting you've spoken about the benefits of it and what are some of the game changers but let's let's now if you could sort of give us a, a walk through in terms of what to what extent can this really be used okay yeah i think uh, ashutosh that with technology becoming more advanced and accessible i think uh, i would see that uh, there is going to be a hybrid approach uh, taken by designers and engineers to meet their Uh, design goals. Right. Uh, I would, I would, you know, uh, cite an example of Volkswagen. You know, hmm. uh, recently they, what they did was they re- uh, retrofitted their microbus, which is like a famous microbus with electric okay. light ray, and they put, uh, you know, some of the components using generative design technology. Now, right. what they achieved is that uh, definitely they want to differentiate their brand, but at the same time they realized that generative design can be applied to, uh, you know, components like wheels. which previously okay. used to uh, be very heavy and now mm-hmm. with generative design technology they were like uh, i think 20% or 25% lighter uh, okay. than the previous ones another example or another uh, reason why they are looking at such uh, technologies is that you know it gives them a lot of uh, design lead time so they can actually you know use that time in doing simulations and test runs and that is actually quite uh, quite uh, you know helpful in the indian scenario ashutosh i see that uh, you know since brand differentiation is going to be a challenge going forward because we are we are given so many choices right. i think generative design uh, technology can be leveraged for customer uh, customer uh, you know experience or you know giving them more customized offerings and sure. i think this is going to be a big trend uh, you know in the indian automotive space going forward right So thank you so much again Samarth I think uh, you know it, due to the paucity of time we of course have those many questions and we're very happy to you know have your your perspectives uh, shared with us today uh, so thank you once again for joining and also of course a big thank you to our view, you know viewers for tuning in uh, we hope you you were able to get a lot of key takeaways and learnings from this session so till the next time thank you again and before we part uh, Samarth any any parting thoughts from your side anything that you'd like to leave our our audience uh, with today Yeah uh, Ashutosh I feel that generative design is going to play a transformational role in the automotive in reshaping the automotive space in the future right. I would say that uh, engineers and designers would uh, consider computer not just just a tool but as right. a partner to solve problems right. so that is a future I'm going to uh, envision Sure thank you once again Samar it was indeed a pleasure speaking to you today thanks for joining us Thank you Ashutosh